Hello everybody, welcome to um, Broken Time Jazz Drumming Part 3. I think we are live. Yeah, we must be live. It's just gone quarter to 12 on a Thursday morning. I hope you're all doing really well. I'm going to take this opportunity to discuss and share with you some more of my ideas on the development of broken time drumming, which is what I was just having a play with there. And this is largely within a jazz broken time context. But as as we'll see later on, there are further applications to this. Th those of you that have seen these live streams before, especially on the broken time side, will know that I am developing um, a book on this, real sp really specifically on the development of broken time drumming. So these these are a great opportunity for me to share and hone that material. Over the previous two episodes of Broken Time Drumming, I've been talking in great detail about motifs, combinations, phrasing, especially over four bar spans. And because I've got some recording work coming up that actually requires some of this material to be played, I've been doing a lot of work myself on developing this. So I thought I would take this episode to share with you my own pr uh, process for developing and internalizing this vocabulary because one of the key themes throughout the book and throughout these previous live streams has been the acquisition, the integration, the internalization of vocabulary with which we can then improvise. So I thought I would use this episode to show you exactly what I mean using some vocabulary, some motifs that I am less familiar with. So this is kind of a real-time look at how I'm internalizing this material. So let's crack on. One of the key processes, as I've said all along, is learning new vocabulary to such an extent that you can improvise with it. Now, that is quite a long and arduous process, actually. Uh, it takes time. So I'm working with um, a set of three beat motifs. So these are motifs. These are set patterns where all four voices are integrated. That is three beats long. So the main, mot the main motif I'm working on at the moment sounds like this. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now, if you saw last week, we were talking about, or the last last episode, sorry, we were talking about the integration of this dotted motif on the bass drum. And that's what's happening here. Listen to the bass drum pattern specifically here and you hear this dotted quarter note running throughout the motif. Right? That's one of the nice upshots of playing a three beat motif. So of course, my first goal here is is clean execution of this precision with all four limbs as far as coordination goes. This is quite an unusual motif because it begins on the hi-hat. Beat one of the motif is a hi-hat. Now, as I'm learning this, I'm taking, a, I'm, I'm taking great care to keep my ride cymbal strong here. A lot of the time feel that we want to generate in jazz playing comes from this ride cymbal far less uh, far less involved are the bass drum and the snare drum. This is a real cymbal driven time feel here. So I'm trying to keep the hi-hat and ride loud and the bass drum and the snare drum as kind of decorative. So I, I, I've got the execution pretty nicely there. I'm pretty comfortable with the main motif here. So my next task is to make sure I can feel this across four bars of 4-4. Four, four. A lot of jazz is in groups of four bars. We've got 12 bar forms, eight bar forms, 32 bar forms, right? A lot of these A and B sections are eight bars long. And even if they're nine bars long or something strange like Chick Corea's Humpty Dumpty or something like that, we can feel it as two lots of four bars and then an add, add one at the end. So being able to feel something in a four bar phrase is extremely beneficial. And it's also a really good way for us to practice this material because just practicing this three beat motif out of context, <laughs> is not particularly useful. That's just like practicing an individual word's pronunciation again and again. We actually want to say it in conversation to create meaning. So this time I'm going to play through that motif again, but I'm going to count it for you in four bars of 4-4. Four, four. And this is, of course, going to generate a polyrhythmic effect where that motif is not only rolling across the bar line, 
but it's rolling across the four bar line. This is a four bar figure and it, uh, it takes three lots of four bars to resolve. A three beat motif will resolve after 12 bars of four, four. I'll show you what I mean. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. Three, two, three, four. Four, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. Three, two, three, four. Four, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. Three, two, three, four. Four, two, three, four. And then on the thirteenth bar, beat one of the motif lines up, resolves with beat one of the four bar figure, okay? Talking and counting and playing at the same time noise leaves me out of breath. <laughs> right, so this is an important stage to get to because we don't want to play this lovely odd beat, odd length motif only to get lost on the second repetition and to be relying on the rest of the band to keep you in time. One one aspect we really need to pay attention to as drummers is being in control of the time feel, which means keeping track of where we are in the form. Okay, this goes on even if we were to begin this motif somewhere else in the figure. We don't realistically play time by just repeating a three beat motif over and over again. What we do is use that motif in a relative manner at some point within that form. So we might be grooving along one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one. And I used it at some point in that figure, but I'm able to count it and I'm able to keep my place within that four bar measure because I've practiced this figure in this, in this particular way, this motif in this particular way. So I really can't overstate how important it is for the process of acquiring this vocabulary to count it as part of a larger rhythmic arrangement, okay? Even just counting it in three, one, two, three, one, two, three, or even just counting it in one bar of four, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, because after seven, eight, or nine bars, you are not going to consciously know how many bars you have already played. And this is a problem if you are as if you are playing as part of a jazz head. Okay, we, as I've said, I'm banging, I'm repeating myself, but we need to be able to keep track of where we are. As you do this, a curious upshot is that you start to hear the phrase differently. If we were to hear this as a waltz, one, two, three, one. So think of like, uh, sorry. Da, da, na, da, na. Oh my god, singing and playing. How those guys sing and play the drums, I have no idea. I was trying to sing my favorite things. <laughs> but I can't sing and play at the same time. You singing drummers, you have my respect. Anyway, if we hear it in that 3-4 waltz time, it sounds like a waltz, okay? But when we take it out of context and put it into this 4-bar measure of 4-4, four, four, instead, we start hearing it as a building of tension, right? So if we're playing something relatively up-tempo... Okay, we're obviously hearing this in 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 2, 3, 4. If I bring in... That three bar, that three beat motif. Sorry. Two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, three, four. We hear it differently because it fulfills a different function. It fulfills a different role. It is now creating tension across that four bar figure because the, the phrase is shorter than the bar in which I'm playing it. I'm playing a bar of four, four, but I'm playing a phrase that is three beats long. So that has a compression effect on the time. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked a little bit because we're talking about internalizing vocabulary here. So I've already started hinting that if I am familiar enough with this phrase and I have practiced it sufficiently in this way, I can start to integrate it into a larger improvisation as a target point. So I can keep generic time. Three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. I was able to consciously choose to use that phrase 
to finish my four bar figure, okay? One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one. You can hopefully hear that figure occurring in there. I'm trying to show you when I'm using it. I now have enough control over that motif that I'm able to use it at will as part of a larger phrase, as part of a larger rhythmic figure across those four bars of 4-4. Four, four. Um, that takes time. That takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of patience to allow that control to happen. But now that we've got that, now we're at a stage where I am able to comfortably feel that motif as an isolated phrase, I want to start exploring variations and developing it as a motif rather than just making it exist in isolation. So I've come up with a few variations of this motif that keep the same character while providing a little bit of extra decoration or change variety. So one of the variations I have come up with is this one. Now the variation is just a two-step, uh, a two-part change. The first is to bring in a left-hand eighth note. So the original pattern without ride symbol is this. The variation is this. One extra left hand on the eighth note of the first beat. One uh, one uh, as opposed to one. Okay, that's the first change. The second change is I change the ride symbol pattern. The first motif is one, two, a three. Now I'm using an offbeat pattern, one, a, uh, a three, one, a, uh, a three. Put those together and we get this new variation motif. Let's hear the original and the variation. Very similar. You can hear that the, for, that the latter is based on the former, but there is enough variation to keep it interesting. So to begin with, I need to keep this uh, as a conscious piece of vocabulary that I am again becoming more familiar with. So I work through it in the same way as I did the original. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, etc. Over the course of those 12 bars, after which it will resolve. But I'm trying to pronounce, as in execute the motif cleanly. But of course, crucially, keeping track of where I am as part of the arrangement. One, two, three, four, two, three, three, four, three, 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 four, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, three, three, six, ah, ah. One, two, three, four, three, 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 four, three, three, four, three, 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 four, three, 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 four. You can easily get, you can so easily get carried away. <laughs> it's good, it's a, it's a good uh, lesson in discipline as well. But as you start, you start to hear these ideas start to develop that you want to explore. But we've got to be patient, one thing at a time. So we're on this motif here. As we said, the ride symbol is strong here. Now, let's imagine we've gone through the same process. Uh, we've integrated that uh, variation motif into our larger playing, as I demonstrated a moment ago. What we can start doing now is combine the original with the variation to create a little bit of motivic development where the first motif is being taken and expanded upon by the second. At this point, we get what, what sort of resembles a call and response type phrase that is now six beats long total, the original motif and then the resolution variation motif. Notice as well that dotted quarter note on the bass drum is carrying on underneath all of this equally spaced. If I'm feeling that in, in four bars of 4-4, four, four, unless the audience is specifically counting my phrasing, 
they're at this point they're going to start to lose the pattern they are no longer going to hear a three or a six beat motif they are going to hear broken time in the context of four four because the brain can only follow one path at a time it can either follow the four beats of the bar or it can follow the six beats of the motif most listeners are not going to be following a six beat motif on the drums they're going to be following the four beats of the bar especially if the bass is walking or something like that so if we hear that combination now of the original motif and the variation uh, in 4-4 if we hear it in context you start to develop this really nice broken time effect again one two three four two three three four three two three four four two three four one two three four two two four three two three four four two three four one and so on it creates a really nice effect um but at the same time we're not just trying to build this up to speed we are trying to internalize this as a word or a phrase that we can use at will remember your goal here your your physical ability is going to outpace your mental ability here. I can play this combination. Ah. Pretty fast. But that's useless to me if I can't keep up with where I am in the measure, as I've said all along. So you've just got to take your time with this and make sure that you are actually internalizing the vocabulary rather than just rushing to get it up to speed. Because as I've said, if you start playing this stuff for real and you can't keep track of it, you're going to get lost and you're going to be that guy looking around trying to follow the chords on the piano. Say, where are we? Where, where, where are we? And you don't want to be that guy. So just slow it down a little bit and be patient with this. Now, anyway, I'm not going to be patient and I'm going to add a second variation here. I'm going to add a third phrase to this. Uh, and again, it's just a variation of that original to expand the motivic development even further. And my uh, variation motif sounds like this. Still starts with that hi-hat, still has that eighth note on the and of one, but now we've got two bass drums in the middle. And I've changed the ride symbol as well. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh, one, two, three. Oh, one, two, three. Okay, so as before, we follow the same process. Till you get lost. And then we repeat the same thing we did previously. We start internalizing it and using it at will as part of a larger improvisational vocabulary. Anyway, I want to get on to the next part which is, of course, combining these together as a three-part motif now. We've got the original, the first variation, and the second variation equating nine beats total, which act as a really nice piece of motivic development beginning from one simple three-beat motif. Okay, so let's hear, first of all, no counting, let's just hear these three motifs in order. Original, first variation, second variation, three beats long each. I should I should note here as well the importance of memorization. I, I've got these written down on my music stand over here because I knew I was going to talk about them and I, d I didn't want to forget them. But it's, it's really, really important that you memorize the phrasing that you are working on because the memorization is part of your internalization process so you can actually improvise with this. If we If we stick with the language analogy that I've used in some previous episodes, we're learning to speak a foreign language. We are learning new vocabulary. We are learning new sentence structure. We are learning new pronunciation of a foreign language. And in order to speak that language fluently, we can't be looking at our guidebook all the time, okay? So we use that as a reference, as a starting point, whatever your source material is. And we need to memorize it as soon as possible so that we can actually start using it. Because if you're playing something up-tempo in the heat of it, 
you are only going to be able to play things you have memorized and practiced an awful lot. That new thing that's just on the periphery of your ability has got no chance even if you can play it really nicely in the practice room. So memorize it straight away. Let's hear that what is now a nine beat figure in context. Of course, it's going to take up nine of our four bars of four, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four three. And then I've run out of time. So now I'm quite simply going to repeat that entire nine bar motif across subsequent bars of four, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, etc. I won't go on because I know you don't want to listen to me count all day, but that process as a practice tool is really, really important because again, if you just start hearing this as a nine beat motif, you go, yeah, I pulled it off. Wait, where are we? Where's one? Oh, and you're lost again. So it's, it, I, I can't stress it enough. It's vitally important that you count this across a larger structure so you can hear it in context, okay? So this is about the stage that I have currently got to with this particular motif. I'm looking at... Um, a manuscript, or I should say, a draft of my of my book, and for this particular motif, three, six, nine, twelve, there are fifteen variations suggested. Now, it is not intended, and it is certainly not a productive use of our time to try and learn and master fifteen variations of the same motif. Far more valuable is to learn two, three, or four variations and to learn them to a much deeper level. You listen to a lot of the greats, and they will do an awful lot with very little. Okay, you will hear the same pieces of vocabulary, the same phrases, the same patterns, just used in really creative and expertly crafted ways. So it is far more beneficial quality over quantity here. So if I were so inclined, I could choose a third variation and create a fourth phrase. But instead, what I'm going to do now, because I'm, I'm just watching the time, we're at sort of 23 minutes. I'm going to create a full four bar combination that begins with this motif. So what I would think I will do, let's do some maths. If I've done three, six, nine beats of the bar already, I've got seven beats left. So in theory, I could use a seven beat motif. But I think from a musical perspective, going three, 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 seven kind of defeats the point of the threes because the whole point of these three beat motifs is they generate tension. So what I'm going to try instead, attempt three six nine i'm going to go back to the beginning and use the original motif again that takes us up to 12 beats and then i'm left with four beats of the bar so that's three six nine the original again to 12 and then four beats left over and i think i will just do a sort of generic one a two a three a four or something like that to fill those remaining four beats let me have a play for a minute There's the nine beat motif. I'm going to go back to the beginning now. 10, le uh, 10, 11, 12. Uh, there's a simple four beat at the end. Let's see if we can work that in then. Yeah, there's there's four bars, right? One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, three, two, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. I got the order wrong. And I got the order wrong that time as well, but did you notice? Okay, you can hopefully start to hear there 
how we can use this original motif to develop much longer phrasing vocabulary. Obviously, this still requires a little bit of work. As I said, this is vocabulary that I am currently working on as a sort of uh, proof of concept to make sure that the material in the book is good enough. Good technique. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. And, and that's, a, that's a good point as well. When you're doing all of this, obviously, you, ne you need to pay attention to your execution. You need to pay attention to your technique and your posture and everything like that. Uh, who was that? The, the, the great samurai Miyamoto Musashi said, you fight the way you practice. So you need to practice the way you want to perform, right? Um, now, I, I consider this sort of practicing to be um, similar to, and, and I, I'm not comparing it in any way whatsoever, but like these, these, these um, special forces soldiers that will drill entering a building somewhere in a warehouse, right? They've got this mock-up building and they will drill entering through a particular window, entering through the rear, clearing out a building, stairs, and, and, and it's they're developing a hypothetical situation, but they are drilling what to do in that situation. And I'm not at all comparing drumming to soldiering, but the same sort of practicing approach, I am creating a four-bar motif for myself and practicing it in such a way that when it comes f to play for real, I've got this comfortable vocabulary that I know that I can use in various contexts. Steve, how are you? Nice to see you. Long time no see. Thank you for the kind comments. Um, I'm glad. I'm glad you're interested. Um, keeping two and four with the hands three would also be cool. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a lot of things you can explore that will break away from the sort of old patterns that you fall back on. Um, nice to hear from you. Um, I'm glad. I'm glad you like the sound of it. But I t t just to finish what I was saying. If you if you can if you think of that mantra that you practice that you perform the way you practice, we want to practice in as thorough and as controlled and as comfortable a way as possible to make sure that when it comes to perform this material, it is completely under our control. Uh, twenty seven and a half minutes. That's perfect. I think I will leave that there today, because anything else I risk embarrassing myself by making a mistake, <laughs> more mistakes than I already have. But. This is the process that I am currently working through to internalize this vocabulary for myself. And what I find is I can be sitting there with the metronome on three minutes into a five minute practice run of a, of a motif, like thinking, yep, I've got it, easy, I should speed it up. Yep, got it, easy. Yeah, I've got it. Let's look at a combination. <laughs> and then when I come to actually ha tackle the, the material that I've got to record, it's like, oh, that's really hard to, internal to, to get that three that I thought I had to actually play it in a meaningful and musical way without throwing myself off. So just, uh, just be, be patient with it. Go deeper than you think you need to to internalize it. What was What's the old saying? Amateurs practice till they get it right. Pros practice until they can't get it wrong. And when you're trying to internalize vocabulary, that's a really good, <laughs> a really good mantra because if you try and do something on stage and you've just not quite mastered it, again, you'll throw yourself off. You'll get lost and then you'll be looking around for help from the rest of the band. Um, so it's vocabulary, 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 familiarity, in context. So I hope this has been of value uh, to some of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, of course, to my Patreon subscribers. You know who you are and your support is massively appreciated. Links to my website and things like that are in the description for video lessons and my book and Patreon and other things like that. So if you like what I do, check it out. Uh, I will see you all next Thursday about the same time for my next live stream. And good luck and stay safe. Thank you guys for joining me and see you next time.